All right, welcome back to the Krabby Dice. Today we're going to be looking at the first expansion to Istanbul called Mocha and Bakshish. So just like the name kind of signifies here, uh, the major addition to this one is going to be the inclusion of a new resource called coffee. <laughs> all right, so we're going to be using our coffee to try to get gems in different ways. All right, so this video, I'm going to sort of talk about the components in the box and how it changes up the setup. Then I'm going to go through the rules and then finally my thoughts are going to be at the end. All right, so let's get started. All right, let's start things off by looking at what's in the box and how to set it up. All right, so this is gonna be more of a setup video here. So the first thing you're gonna get in the box are six brand new tiles, all right? I'm gonna just align them over here. So you get four brand new ones that you're gonna play with and you're gonna get two replacements for the base game. All right, so these are the base game ones. You're gonna get one replacement for the Canavessary. <laughs> it's gonna have the coffee marker on here. And you're gonna have a replacement for the Wainwright, which is uh, has the icon here on it. Um, now, what you're going to do is for the regular setup, instead of just having these below, I'm just showing you this as an example to sort of differentiate it. You're going to shuffle all these tiles up together and then display them in a four by five grid. So you can either have them four by five or four by five. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure that the uh, fountain is in the middle. I like to have it right in the middle, one of these two spots. So it's right in the middle. Uh, so it's not going to shift the board on one side or the other. Okay, so now let's look at the other objects that come into the game. All right, so first, most important thing is we're going to get coffee. So you get a bunch of coffee tokens, just leave them on the side of the board. The next thing you're going to get are the coffee cards that go on the guild hall. All right, so you can either put the deck right on the tile or just leave it on the side of the board. Doesn't really matter. Um, there you go. So you're going to also have a roasting plant, nothing special going on there. Coffee house, you're going to add gems to the row just like you would in the other two spots from the base game all right you're always going to fill up the five gems here and here as you can see you're going to need coffee to turn in to get the gems and lastly is the tavern all right so a bit of a setup here you're going to first put out your backsheesh tile so it's going to be always on the yellow side first you're going to leave it like this next you're going to have the barrier token you're going to have it on top of the tile of barrier <laughs> all right you're going to have it here we're going to deal with this again later and finally you're going to have two different special tiles all right um just like regular tiles on the board from the mosques uh, you're going to sort them in order from least to most resources all right there's two different types and you're just going to leave them on the side of the board all right other things you're going to get extra gems just leave those on the side of the board and you're also going to get a coffee trader so just to add to the smuggler and the governor just like you would with those guys you're going to roll the dice and place this where it belongs all right all right, and the absolute last thing you're going to get is a whole slew of new cards to add into your bonus deck. All right, just shuffle it into your base deck and you're good to go. So now let's go over the rules. All right, so the major difference in rules between this and the base game is now you're always racing to six rubies. All right, no matter how many players you're playing, usually it was two, only two players in the base game, you'll race to six. But in this one, it's always six. All right, so... Uh, you might think that it's a bit of a longer game, but not really because there's a faster ways to get rubies now. All right. Um, the second major change is instead of doing your regular turn, which has the four steps, movement, uh, encountering other merchants, doing the action and encountering of the family members slash uh, governor smuggler action. What you do is you spend your whole turn playing a guild card. These are the guild cards and you get them from the guild hall. All right, so instead of doing your turn, it's very important. You just play the guild hall card. When you do that, you can't even play other bonus cards or use any of your abilities if they kind of uh, go with the kind of card that you're playing. For example, going to roll dice at the uh, tea house or whatever. You can't even use your powers uh, from the mosques or use other bonus cards. All right, so you're literally just playing a guild card on your turn. Those are the two major differences. Now I pretty much just have to explain you what the new tiles do when you land on them and how coffee affects the game. All right, so let's talk about the guild hall first because I just mentioned it. So when you land here, you're going to get a coffee. You're going to draw two cards off the top of the, de the deck. You're going to pick one of them and toss the other one into a discard pile. All right, remember, these are replacing your turn by doing one action, but the actions are really powerful. All right. Next, we're going to go to Roasting Plant. This is where you can go get some coffee. So you can do, there's three different actions on here. You can do each of them one time. You can do one, two, or three of them. All right, so the first one is paying $2 for two coffee, paying any good for two coffee, or 
discarding a card from your hand and uh, getting two coffee. All right, this could be either a guild card or a bonus card. Next is the coffee house. All right, so this just works exactly like the Sultan's Palace or the Gemstone Dealer. Uh, you need to turn in that much coffee and you're going to get this gem and put it on your track. The next person will have to pay more and so on and so on and so on until you reach the last space, which is 10, where you can keep turning in 10 coffee to keep getting gems. All right, and the last tile that's new in this game is the tavern. So here we got a couple of options. What you do on this one is you pick one of the three options on the tile. All right, uh, let's talk about the first option up here first. So this one, if you pay two coffee, you can put out the barrier. So this is a barrier that stops all other players from walking through. So for example, if I place the barrier right here, nobody can walk from this tile into this tile. All right. After placing the barrier, you get to keep this tile. All right. And this signifies that you could actually go over. So let's say red would have placed his, uh, his marker there then he would be the only one that'd be able to cross the barrier and nobody else would. Now, um, in a future turn, somebody else can do that action and basically they move where the barrier is on the board and then they will get this tile. All right, so it just moves from person to person after the first person has picked it up. All right, now you don't go away empty handed. After you place the barrier, you also get to activate one of the two tiles on the side of the barrier. So let's say I place the barrier right here. I get to activate either this tile or this tile. All right, the next spot that you could use is turning in coffee to get one of the new sort of special ability, new mosque style tiles, all right? So uh, just like the regular mosques, they're gonna go up in price. So they start off at one coffee and they go up to four coffee. First one uh, to get it will get it for a cheaper price. Uh, this one here is just a power for when you encounter the smuggler governor or coffee trader you can get their benefit for zero instead of having to pay two coins every time which is pretty good and this power is kind of neat this one instead of moving one or two in any direction on your turn you can slide as far as you want on the map so if my guy was here i can literally go all the way to sultan's palace in one move instead of having to walk one two and then one two again okay uh, there is a restriction with this tile is you cannot move through the barrier. So if the barrier was here, you wouldn't be able to go through unless you owned the barrier tile. And the last option here is a way to get gems. All right. So if you turn in for coffee and pay the goods depicted on the backsheesh tile here, you get to take any gem on the board uh, from the coffee house, uh, gemstone dealer or Sultan's palace. And you get the first one. So you can either take the first one here or you can take the first one here, or you can take the first one there. All right, people are gonna start taking them throughout the game, but you always can take one of the first ones, and that's what that gem signifies. Now, if you do activate the final action here, uh, at the end of your turn, you're gonna flip this over and it's gonna change back and forth. So the next person that wants to do this is gonna have to turn in a red, a blue, and a green, and then when they do it, you're just gonna keep flipping it back and forth. So everyone, every time somebody gets one of these gems, you're gonna be flipping this tile. All right, and there you go. Those are most of the rules. Let's just talk about some of the additions uh, that were from the base game. So we have this new uh, anniversary uh, tile. So for this one, now you actually get an additional coffee every time you uh, take this action. Before in the base game, it was only cards and the discard. And then we have to talk about the coffee trader. So this works exactly the same way as the smuggler. Um, so if you encounter him, you can take a coffee by paying two gold. All right, and that's your only option. And pretty much those are all of the rules. All right, super quick review time here for the first expansion. So what is there to say? This game almost doesn't change at all with this expansion, okay? Um, what I will say is if you're playing four or five players, for sure add one of the two expansions. And the expansion I would throw in is how sort of gamery you want the game to be all right so if you add this expansion it's very similar to the base game there's almost no rules overhead whatsoever you just have to tell them that there's a new resource and you can spend the resources to get gems <laughs> that's about it all right almost no overhead if you play with the other expansion there are some rules overhead you have to explain a bit more things so you play that one with more experienced gamers for sure 
All right, but if you're playing four or five, play definitely with one of the two expansions. What I'm gonna say is if you're playing one, uh, sorry, two or three players, then don't play with any of the expansions. The game's gonna be way too big, way too open. Uh, you're pretty much just playing multiplayer solitaire at that point. Okay, so now let's just go over some of the mechanisms for this one and if I like them and what they add to the game. All right, so again, we have coffee. You're just using coffee to get extra gems either at the tavern or the coffee house. All good things uh, because it's so easy to get coffee in this game you're actually racing to six now instead of five like you would in the base game you know what it's fine the game length's gonna stay exactly the same because like I said it's much easier to get coffee and you're gonna get your gems at around the same amount of time I clocked them in at around an hour whether you're going for five from the base game or six with this expansion okay so it's all good stuff. The only mechanic that's a bit weird in this game is the barriers, but they sort of needed a way to kind of activate any other tiles around the board because it is a much bigger board. And if you are around one section of the board, it's going to be hard to go across the board and activate it. So they did add a new barrier mechanism, which adds a barrier and then you get to activate one of the tiles on the side of the barrier. It's just a weird mechanism where you can't cross through. It's, ah, it's all right, but uh, it's fine. Uh, I do like the new power tiles here, they're really powerful. Uh, the free resource one is pretty good and the sliding across the board can be really powerful especially if you're targeting things that are always in the same row or column. All right. And lastly, let's just end on the end this video on these guild cards. All right? I absolutely love these guild cards. These cards are probably my favorite addition to the game. They're super powerful. When you play them though, it is going to take your whole turn keep that in mind but the, you always get an awesome awesome benefit from from the uh from the card so for example here is just take a free uh wheelbarrow extension uh, pay any six goods to get a ruby so on and so on so they're all extremely powerful and game breaking uh so keep that in mind if somebody's hoarding these cards they're gonna they're gonna have some pretty awesome turns coming up okay and that's it that's my overview for this one definitely throw it into the base game if you're just playing four or five players with newer players and uh, click on the links below and you'll see my thoughts on the second expansion all right so let's go